Today I made my first Etch component that's going to be available to everybody, at least in the Etch community to start. And then once I have my own website, it'll be available there as well. And this one is the Progressive Blur. This is something that has been available in Figma for about a couple months now and is now going to be available to Etch users with just a simple drop-in. Let me show you how it works, how to get it set up, and, and how you can use it. So this one, the, this particular use case, I want this to sit in a card, and I want it to sit behind my text content and to have a nice roll-off blur, probably about 50% of my card. So what we're going to do here, I'm going to open this up in Etch. I'm actually going to refresh this real quick because it's going to go back to nothing so we can see the difference here. I want to take the JSON that I have for the progressive card. Again, this is in Etch community now. It'll be available on my website later. But we're just going to paste in that JSON. There we go. Okay. And then I'm just going to drag this into my card. I want it to be at the very bottom. And then what we're going to do is we have a couple settings available to us that will change. And right now it's set to position fix. So it's my whole entire browser window. And that's for anybody that wants the little progressive blur bar at the bottom. I'll show you that in a second, but let's show you the card right now. I'm going to change that to absolute. So we'll go from position fixed to position absolute. That will automatically set my parent, the card to position relative for me, and then just set this to be the entire, entire frame. Now I want, it's right now it's sitting on top of my content. So I want it to sit behind. So all I need to do is look at my card content you just set a Z index for it, which already has one of two for me. And I'll just set my progressive blur to a lower Z index. So I'll just change it to a Z index down here of one. And now my content's on top. So let's go and save it. Let's take a look. Not much is happening. It's super small at the bottom. So what I need to do now is set the height. I want this to be 50% height and a max blur of, let's say, 20 pixels. So we'll save that. And now we have a really nice roll off progressive blur that was done for us in just a couple seconds. Let me show you what it looks like to have it on the entire web page if you want it as a bottom bar. So let's go to my homepage here. If you want it to sit the bottom here where anything kind of fades in as it comes up or goes down, let me show you how to do that real quick. Okay, back in Etch, we already have our component in Etch, so we, should, we can reuse this wherever we want. So I'm gonna go to my templates, my catch-all, and I'm going to grab my progressive blur component. It's in here, already set to position, position fixed. I want it to be at the very top of my website or my web page, so 200 is perfect. Now, I do want a height of, let's say, 8% and a max blur of, let's do 7, and let's save. And now, if we look at this, now we have a nice roll off. It's a little too high for me. So I'm actually going to set that back to like five here. And then there you go. It's a little better. And then now we have a really nice fading effect happening here for all the elements on my homepage. But that's it. That's my first edge component. I think it's going to help a lot of people who get designs in Figma with that progressive blur. Slap this in there and you're going to be good to go.